Hello everyone, how are you doing today? I'm back with another video and in today's video we have an HP EliteBook Folio 9480M laptop. And in this video I'm going to show you guys how you can open it up and how you can increase the speed or the storage on your laptop. Uh, it's really easy. You can put a mechanical drive in here, SSD drive, M.2 SSD drive. I'm going to show you all the combination that you can have and what are the best combination that you should have in here. And also remember before we doing this uh, video, you're not going to have any files or Windows operating system on a new drive. So pretty much you want to back up your files, personal data, everything on external hard drive or on the cloud. Because once you upgrade the hard drive, you have to reinstall Windows. It's really easy to reinstall fresh re install of Windows. I made a video how to create your Windows 10 USB boot drive. And also I made a video how to install it the proper way on an HP laptop and at the end of this video I'm going to show you guys how to go to the boot menu and how you start the process of installing Windows in here. All right first thing first you want to power up the laptop you want to power it up obviously and back up your files. Now you first thing first you need a screwdriver set. I'm going to be using an iFixit screwdriver set. Uh, from this set we're going to be using a Phillips number zero. And we're going to go ahead and remove the battery by pulling this trigger towards the left side. Slide the battery towards yourself about half a centimeter and lift it up, put it to one side. Next, we need to remove the service cover to the left. Just loosen up the screw in here and the screw in here just a few turns and that's it. Then you want to slide this cover towards the left about four millimeters and then lift it up. All right, so down here, you're going to see the hard drive right away here. There's a 2.5 inch hard drive. To remove it, you need to remove four screws that hold the caddy, the hard drive in place. The caddy is a piece of metal that holds the hard drive. So loosen up the screw right there. The screw right beside it on the other side. The screws in the front. Now you can hold it from here and pull it up, but sometimes it can get ripped. But there's a tiny adhesive on the sides, uh, but it should eventually come up. Or right, when you pull it up, it comes up with an adapter that goes to the board. So this adapter, you can remove it right there, put it to one side. Now in here, when you, this is an SSD hard drive. This is 180 gig, so you can replace it with a two terabyte or four terabyte SSDs. I'll leave the link in the video description for one of the better brands. Kingston's are not really great, 88 are really cheap. The best ones will be the Samsung brand Evo Pro. Once you get the new hard drive in here, you can either put a solid state drive or you can put a low profile mechanical hard drive. The by low profile, I mean, they have to have a low profile right here. If you put a regular uh, mechanical drive, they have a higher profile, so the case will not close. So you make sure you put a low profile mechanical hard drive up to two terabyte. After two terabyte, they really become tech and they're not suitable. All right, but any SSD hard drives are low profile. So you can go up to four terabyte SSDs that are really low profile. Uh, the only thing you need to focus on is a SATA connector and the power connector on the hard drives. They'll have the same connection. You wanna make sure they are facing on the same, uh, facing the same directions on the caddy. To remove the caddy, there's a four screws. There's two screws on here, on this side, and two screws on the other side of the caddy. So there's the two screws in here and two screws on the other side. So pretty much you want to remove these screws and put the new hard drive in here. This is a little thicker. Put the new hard drive in there in the same orientation and then screw it down. All right. This is for demonstration, I'm not going to do it actually. So let's put this one back in. Imagine this is the new one. Just screw it right in there. I recommend you guys to put a two terabyte mechanical drive in here. And once you have the hard drive in here, grab the adapter, put it right on top, bring it over, make sure the connector is matching and push it down and tighten up the screw. The reason I put mechanical drive in this SATA port is because the SSD drives, they have a wear, they wear down really easy um, based on the how much file you transfer, you delete, and you download. 
So you can reduce the lifespan of the SSD really quickly if you download big files or games on the SSD directly. So what I like to do, put a nice mechanical hard drive right in here and, and grab yourself an M.2 NVMe SSD and place it right in here. But this is a short M.2 SSD right here. These are the long ones. I'll leave the link for a short M.2 SSD. So the short ones, it goes right through here. Make sure the notch matches right there. You want to put it in at like a 10 degree right inside the jack, all the connector in there and push it towards the motherboard and then tighten up the tiny screw. I'll leave the links where you can buy these tiny screws that are really cheap. And then you just want to match the screw hole right there and then you just want to screw it down. So the point would be to put your windows on your M.2 NVMe hard drive, which is much, much faster than SSD uh, SATA connections. So put your launchers, your programs, everything on an NVMe and use this mechanical hard drive for your photo pictures. I mean, for your pictures, for your movies, for your games, use this one. So this is the best combination. But if you want to go over the kill, you can put a 4 terabyte SSD and NVMe and you have a really fast connection in between them. It all depends how you like it. All right, so let's put everything back together. Let's say that you got this one installed, you have this one installed. You wanna grab the bottom cover, bring it in an offset position with a little offset position right here and you wanna slide it this way. Make sure it goes all the way in. There. And then you wanna tighten up the screw. Now I'm gonna power on, I'm gonna put the, my USB windows in it and I'm gonna get you to the, just to the Windows installation guide. So put it right there, the battery, and lock it down. Slide, lock that way. So I don't know if he has any battery in here, so I'm just gonna hope that he has enough battery to me get to the boot screen. So I'm gonna plug in my USB right through here. And we're gonna power on once you power on we're gonna keep tapping on escape key until you see a menu appear on the left side so i don't see any menu still it is not showing keep control uh, it did show but i just restarted so i'm gonna keep tapping on it And I'm going to stop tapping. And once you see the menu, just stop it. And there we have the menu. The refresh rate for these screens are really bad. That's why it does this flickering. My camera can pick it up. So pretty much from this uh, menu, we're going to choose F9. Or go down F9. Press enter and choose your external USB drive. So external USB drive. And now it's going to read my external USB drive. And it's going to take me to the Windows 10 US uh, installation process. And the installation process are really easy. It takes up to five or six minutes probably uh, to get to a desktop. I'll follow my video to how to install it properly so you don't have those extra bloatware on uh, Windows. So it takes maybe up to one minute before it detects your USB and it goes to the installation guide. So don't worry, just be patient. It, it should work. There we go. Now I'm seeing the the three dot the dots circling right there. So right after this, and there we have the Windows installation right in here. So it says English, US keyboard, everything like that. I hope you guys liked this video and helped you guys out. If it did, please click that like and subscribe if you want to support the channel. If you have any question or request, feel free to leave them in a video comment. I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next video.